Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So in this video I thought I'd do something a bit different and discuss a recent book that I read. And so this book is uh, Deep Medicine written by Eric Topol and it's about how artificial intelligence can make healthcare human again. So I'm going to tell you a bit about this book, why I liked it, and hopefully do all of this without revealing too many secrets, but to give a general overview about what's discussed in the book. So bottom line, I really, really did enjoy reading this book, and I do recommend it to anyone, scientist or non-scientist, because it has many important messages that, you know, healthcare is something that's going to affect all of us, and it's, you know, interesting to have his perspective of where he sees medicine going in the upcoming years, which is interesting, uh, slightly scary at times, but uh, something that we should all be aware of. And so this isn't the first book written by Topol, but it's the first book of his that I've read, although I've read other of his review articles before. And so I really like the subtitle to his book about the idea of making healthcare human again the fact that we've kind of lost this uh, doctor-patient relationship over time and the juxtaposition of that human contact with artificial intelligence. And so this theme is obviously carried out throughout the entirety of the book. So there's absolutely no prerequisite to reading this book. To begin with, um, the book starts looking at where artificial intelligence is already at. And so discusses examples where AI has been used uh, to match the top chess players in the world, which is pretty cool, um, before it goes into where AI is being used in healthcare. And I suppose one of the biggest uh, fears with artificial intelligence is that AI can be used to take over jobs and what are people going to be doing, you know, in 20, 30 years time? when AI can do your job better than you can. Well, some of the healthcare professions discussed in this book include surgeons, whereby it's currently predicted it'd be about 30 years before AI could do a better job. But for AI researchers, this could take up to 85 years. But it's not all doom and gloom, because artificial intelligence could open up different jobs that currently we can't even imagine being jobs and also it's exciting because the idea of using AI is not to compete but to combine with our current workforce and to help make things more efficient and effective. For example they could be used to help reduce the error rates because you know we all make mistakes right? And uh, a great example used in the book is of a test whereby they deliberately put in a gorilla into different scans and got radiologists to examine them and um, you know, a significant amount of them failed to notice there was actually a gorilla in the scan. <laughs> it's quite funny. But alongside the concerns for the use of AI, the other concerns that are kind of emphasised throughout the book is why are we doing this? Who benefits from this use of artificial intelligence? And so Topol references from the book Homo Deus and the kind of interesting quotes that 20th century medicine was to heal the sick whilst the 21st century is aiming to upgrade the healthy. And it's the kind of fear that is only the rich going to benefit from the use of artificial intelligence and the kind of ethical and social concerns that need to be considered alongside with these advances in AI in medical research and healthcare. But what I liked most about this book was the idea that we kind of need to reframe the the methods used in medicine um, to suit the you know the modern world and to regain this human patient doctor patient relationship. And this quote by Hippocrates, it is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. But to be able to use this approach, um, you need to have individual patient data. Um, and this is where artificial intelligence could really advance and achieve this, because especially with smartphones and the, the easiness now of getting genetic information, this could definitely be a way of getting a wealth of information about different patients and that information is unique to that patient 
and can enable informative decisions to be made. So one thing that kind of amazed me from reading the book was just the amount of information that can be accessed from your smartphone. So not only the usage of what different apps you're using, it also includes like the speech when you have a phone conversation, um, photos, um, keyboard usage, so how fast you're typing and um, the, the quality or the tone of the voice could potentially be used uh, as well as like the face sensors. I, I mean I know most phones now you have the fingerprint sensors to sign in but facial recognition could also be something that you know it could go somewhere as well as other sensors for like heart rate which could be really useful for preemptive um, heart diseases. Um, and so whilst it's great, yeah, you can get all this information which could be really useful for being like, oh, you might get this disease. It's kind of scary because, you know, who really owns this information and how much, you know, it, what about privacy? You know, there's, there are, you know, it raises really interesting points throughout the book about the great aspects, but also the hazards and the warnings associated with AI in healthcare. But by combining all this data with... Um, your age, gender, weight, genetics, proteomics, and your gut microbiome, it could get to the point where we have uh, these so-called virtual medical assistants on our phone devices, whereby, you know, I could wake up one morning um, and be informed of what I should be eating that day or how much sleep I should be getting. So one initial problem is that this kind of all depends on human behaviour, if I'm actually going to act upon what I'm being told. But the second question is, well, Where's this data coming from? So, as I've already mentioned, this depends on the information that can be gathered from your phone and both from external experimentation. Um, that's <laughs> isn't quite what I meant. Um, but in terms of getting the outputs, this can sometimes depend on information already gained from other individuals. And so, one the thing that could be used in the future is the idea of having a digital twin or multiple digital twins and effectively they're individuals who most resemble all the demographic, <clears throat> biologic, physiologic and anatomic criteria of the person or the patient we're talking about and by updating this information multiple times based on results from other people it can enable more precise or slash accurate um, diagnostics and recommendations for the latest patient. And so, as I mentioned earlier, one of the themes of the book is about bringing back the human aspect to healthcare again. And so, in one of the last chapters, it really em emphasises the point and tries to address the question of whether robots could eventually replace or reproduce human doctors. So, besides empathy, there's a whole range of, you know, human characteristics that, you know, really do define us and make us human. So, this non-exhaustive list includes features such as being able to love, laugh, cry, dream, be afraid, grieve, joy, trust in, care for, suffer, explore, tell stories and jokes, <laughs> inspire, be curious, creative, be grateful, or an optimistic, kind, generous, intuitive and innovative. And this human-human connection is kind of needed for a patient-doctor relationship since it provides these elements of trust and also comfort in times of distress. And so one of the final thoughts from the book is is it that these features are what we should be looking for in selection of future doctors? And how can people be trained to really reinforce these human features? So I can only really say thank you to Eric for such an insightful book, which I really do recommend that you read. And I hope that this video has provided a somewhat brief but uh, good enough overview to make you want to read the book in much more detail. So thanks for listening.